Here we are, the beer idiots at the Stout sur la Muse. Uh, what's happening with your organization in Namur, and uh, what's your thinking now? A new strategy, a new direction? What's your approach here? Okay, so we are at Stout sur Meuse, which is kind of a joke in, in French because Meuse is the name of the river, and we have a lot of cities called Sur something, the name of the river. And so in French, Sur means sour. So that, that's, the, that's the name of it, Stout, Stout Sour and the, the River Meuse. Oh. And so the, the, the event is dedicated to black beers and sour beers. So we are here in the uh, brewery of La Houpe, uh, which is quite a famous uh, brewery here in Namur, the capital city of Valonia. And we rent the, the space just to have a kind of a beautiful environment to welcome people and to have great beers for, for the weekend. So this is the, the aim. Um, for us, it's the seventh or eighth edition. So um, it's something like it's well known right now, I would say. Uh, we have people coming from all over Europe and even the US uh, and Canada this morning. So um, it's quite popular and um, we want people to discover the incredible and most of the time unknown world of black and, and sour beers. Because most of the time people think that a black beer is Guinness and this kind of stuff, coffee oriented something. And the sours are, are the goose and this kind of uh, very famous in Belgium. And we would like to show the, the diversity of these beers. So we have 70 beers, 15 on tap. And uh, out of the 70, we have 40 different sub styles. So for black ones, we have black lager, we have Schwarzbier, we have uh, Imperial Stout, pa Pastry Stout black IPAs etc etc and the same kind of thing for the for the, the sours so yeah this is the uh, this is the aim and this is part of a strategy that we have in in the non-profit organization where we are in is to let people discover this this world of beer so we are not expecting money out of that we are not expecting anything we just want people to taste great beers from the world and to sh to see and to experience the way that beers is just amazing and the organization is so Namur events, this is uh, so events in Namur um, and we organize several festivals uh, per year. So we have this one for black and sours, we have one dedicated to IPAs, but once again we don't want basic IPAs, we would like to show the diversity of IPAs because it's very trendy but what's behind. Uh, then we have one in January dedicated to Christmas and winter beers and we have a big one in July which is uh, definitely bigger with concerts, with uh, breweries are physically there. Um, so yeah, different different strategy, different ways, and entertainment anyway. So you're keeping all of that. Uh, I thought maybe you were rethinking, uh, you know, whether to hold a big festival. You're and, right. Uh, uh, what's your thinking right now? Yeah, you're right. The, the, the main problem, to be honest, is is the cost of such an event. Um, we would like, we want it to have an event to attract the old family. So it means playground for kids, it means concerts, it means beers, it means beer cocktails, food pairing. So everybody can find a, a reason to come. Uh, but it costs a lot. And um, since 2021, we saw the price raised and it was just unbearable for us. And we didn't want to have um, a high price um, tag for, for to, to step in uh, the festival. So it was just like a hard job today. Okay, do we go again? but we ask people in something like 10 euros to step in or uh, we just stop because the philosophy that we have is to have something cheap let people come and then they can discover the world and so we decided to stop with this uh, main festival but we are thinking about that so uh, we are still in the process to find a way to keep this big festival with the brewers so you have this opportunity to meet them to discuss with them but maybe another period of the year maybe another place so we are still thinking about that yeah, because it's a shame, because uh, it's one of the very few festivals that happen in Wallonia uh, surrounding beer. And, and that's a big marketing problem. I know for you know Belgian Beer Week, we have real difficulty recruiting here. Right. Um, you know, you have the big festivals, you have the Winter Beer Festival in Torno. Is there a different philosophy, strategy here in Wallonia that you have to think about? Or um, is there a different taste? The, the problem is, I would say the problem for us, the problem is that um, every single village has a beer fest somewhere in the year. Um, but most of the time, beer festival means having 15 different beers. And you have 
12 out of the 15 that you can find in the supermarket next door and the three others are made by the father of somebody in the team so um, so this is the problem because people won't move every weekend for beer you can do it once too but as soon as you have a family it's hard to explain that you go to beer festival every weekend um, and so I, um, I'm pretty sure that it's a problem for us because People say, okay, there is this great festival in Namibia, fine, we have concerts, we have everything, but next week or two weeks later, we have in the village next two hours, another beer festival. So let's go to that one, it's easier. Um, so yeah, this, this, is, this is where we are right now. And I think that people are looking for quality uh, also. So it's easier to come with this kind of festival where we have very good, let's say, beer geek or oriented beers, definitely. Um, and um, it's, it's a way for us to also be there because you cannot find that in every single village and we are quite unique in Wallonia to having so dedicated uh, beer festival where big geeks can find beers of, on, on tap for 4.5 uh, out of 5 so very good good beers and other people can just come open-minded and taste different things and find the one which is very good for them and the brand under which you used to operate, uh, Namur Capital de la Beer, is that still the brand you're going to hold, or do yeah, 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 we still, see yeah, yeah, other activities in the year. So we still have it, and we see that the city is coming more and more beer oriented. So we see more smaller festivals coming. We have now very great craft beer bars also in the city center. So when we started more than ten years ago, it was something like twelve years ago. I mean, we were the only one, to be honest. Um, I mean, going to the, the next bar, you will have classic Belgian beers. And so we came with something new. And now we see that movement coming. So Namur is becoming a beery city, and which is very great for us because that was the objective. And so we still have the name Namur Capital de la Bière. Um, so it means Namur Capital City of, of Beer. And um, what we are very proud of is that it's really becoming reality, not just because of us, but because of new bars, because of new events. And so that's, that's for us the, the, the success of what we, we did in the past and still doing. Do you uh, foresee those things? I mean, uh, a virtuous circle, shall we say, and so that you guys can start promotion of the uh, well on your beer? Because it's really lacking, uh, I think in this area you have amazing brewers you're definitely right uh, we, we try to have this the same philosophy in Wallonia but for that we need also the support of authorities public authorities and we had but we don't have anymore um, honestly for them I don't think it's a real added value they, they cannot feel it even if, if we are sure that it is um, because people are coming, they are sleeping there, they are going to the restaurant, they are visiting the city. So definitely, um, there, are, there is an added value for, for the city, but they don't see it, to be honest. Second thing is that we don't have a kind of organization like Zitos in, in, in Flanders, which is very proactive. And you, you can be branded by, uh, by Zitos and you have this community of beer lovers that come to one place to another they are ready and to network yeah and they are ready to travel also for that we don't have that in Wallonia um, so this is the, the the second way and the third one is all those festivals so honestly honestly in Wallonia you can find a beer festival every single weekend but the communication is quite low yeah, we so don't even put it, I know able to put it on our calendar I know yeah, I know we'd love to I know, so th this is the problem and because most of the time it's just open doors from a brewery so they just inform the followers and that's it and uh, sometimes it's just like beer festival in, in some villages and they are just informing people in the community around the village, that's it. So you don't have communication to Brussels, to Flanders or to the neighboring countries. So definitely this is, this is where the problem is. Or an opportunity. Uh, or, or an opportunity, definitely. But, I really don't think that those guys would like to have people coming from all over Europe because that's not the objective. They just want to have fun for a weekend. This is our objective. So we try to, it's a, let's say French speaking festival, but we try to have more and more communication in English also. And we can see the results. So as I said, we have half of the room this afternoon was speaking yeah. something else than French. So um, yeah, slowly but surely we, we own it. And where do you go from here? I mean, do you foresee, I mean, leveraging the beer clubs? I mean, 
that's part of, you know, Zitos and all that. They leverage the beer clubs who are very active. Do you see that happening in Wallonia? There, there are some beer clubs that are pretty active. We have. We have. You know, this weekend we have the Liège uh, Beer Festival. Yeah. You know, it's small. They attract a few brewers, but frankly, it doesn't match yeah. you know, what we see elsewhere. Yeah, th yeah, you're right. You're right, definitely. Um, we are that process, but people in Wallonia are not looking for that. So it's, it's more a way to attract, I would say, foreign beer lovers. Um, so yeah, we, we don't really see that, that philosophy. Uh, to give you an example, we made a session, a tasting session with Pierre Tilquin yesterday. So uh, we, we had him on spot explaining about the brewery, explaining about the beers, and a tasting session where we tried six different beers uh, from him and one that was not yet uh, officially uh, out. So a very nice experience and we had 15 person. So, you know, there is an interest, but it's quite limited. We, 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 we they could, don't know uh, Pierre Tilke. <laughs> they don't know about that, but I mean, people are there just to drink beers and to have fun. And so um, that's why Which we have... a good part of it the is, is. industry. Of There's course, of course. Market. Of course. But uh, you're right. You need the, the knowledge and the interest, and it takes right. time to build that. And also because we are in Belgium. I mean, in Belgium, people, they all say that they are king of beer. And when they go abroad, um, we feel that it is not the case. Uh, ask 90% of the Belgian people, they will be able to tell you 10 different brands. That's it. But they say, yeah, I know about it. We are from Belgium, so we know everything. And so it's also hard to convince them to go and see something else. So uh, they go for the, the brands in the supermarkets. They go for the local ones. And then that's it. What's over? So it's okay. There is a new club for tasting something. They will say, no. Thank you. I go to the supermarket and I have the beers I would like to have, and that's it. So um, yeah, that, that's also I think a problem philosophy because it's a long trend history of beer in Belgium, and so we are stuck to that trend, and it's hard to make people leave from that trend. I guess you really need uh, the Wallonian government to step in because you know this year is the reapplication, and Belgium was amazing in getting that designation for UNESCO. You know, from what I see, and it's just in my viewpoint, they really haven't leveraged that. How can the Wallonia government see value in this? Because for me, it, it's an incredible tourist addition. It, it's maybe part of the story of Wallonia compared to Flanders on, on this point of view of tourism. Um, when you go to Brussels Airport, all the, um, all the advertisements are go and visit Flanders. And Flanders is sexy thanks to uh, cities like Antwerp, like Bruges, uh, like Ghent, etc. So it's very attractive because they made it attractive. In Belgium, we, uh, in Wallonia, we lack a bit uh, of that. So you don't see a lot of advertisements to say, okay, please come to Namur, it's a beautiful city, something. Yeah, so yeah. if or please come to Dinant or please exactly. come to, you know, they're so beautiful cities. There's yeah, it is hide and, our, and secrets. Yeah, yeah, come see our, uh, you know, Orval or uh, exactly. Chimay if you're a geek, because it's not only beer, it's all the exactly. monastery, you know. Yeah, you're definitely right. And so can you imagine to promote the city thanks to the beer if you even don't promote your own city? <laughs> so it's very hard. I mean, we are on the very last point of the list. Really? So de definitely this is a problem. So first, try to convince foreigners to come to Wallonia, first of all, and then beers can be an added value. Uh, because there is tourism for, uh, for beer and people are traveling for that. Yeah, um, they want to have new tastes. They want to exactly. see. Why is Belgium on the beer list? I've heard so much about Belgian beers. Perhaps, you know, they want to come and see a place, but they yeah. also want to experience the culture. You're right, you're right. And th this is the place that we have, but it is not yet in the philosophy of the, the region, definitely. And what's your strategy for convincing them? <laughs> oh, we, we, we stopped that, to be honest. Yep. So yeah, after 12 years, we tried some, we had some financial support technical support at the beginning and, and then after five six years they say no stop we don't have the money anymore for that so we are doing it on our own honestly so we're not earning any money on people staying at the hotel going to a restaurant um, I mean it's just a way back to uh, to the city but we are not expecting anything from them uh, well we at the beer radio salute you keep trying and we support you completely thank you for doing what you do thank you very much cheers <laughs>